Hi, I am Steve at Hasura, and I am joined by Gavin Ray. Uh, Gavin, do you mind introducing yourself real quick? Yeah, uh, my name is Gavin, and I'm a technical evangelist uh, here at Hasura. Uh, yeah, so the data dictionary, uh, it's essentially a way for uh, people to kind of explore uh, their data graph. Uh, so that can be a combination of uh, your database, uh, multiple databases, um, as well as uh, you know remote schemas or actions um, that you might have. Um, and it's kind of built in a sort of modular way. Uh, so we have these uh, front end components and, and a back end API that uh, you can kind of use however you like. Uh, and we're hoping that you know the community can really uh, use that as kind of a launch pad to, to build some really neat stuff. Cool. And so uh, hmm, what problems does this solve? Yeah, so especially in larger organizations, one of the issues that you have um, is kind of keeping track of everything. And uh, so one solution to that problem is sort of manually building these developer portals, right? Or internal documentation websites. Um, so when you're trying to collaborate between teams or maintain internal documentation, it can be really, really difficult uh, to keep up to speed uh, and just sort of like get a big picture view of, you know, what, what your holistically your data looks like. Um, so a tool like this is just uh, kind of an, uh, a fun, like easy way to uh, visually digest that information. And uh, anybody, you know, even non-technical people can kind of get like an at a glance look of uh, what your data model looks like. Can you mind sharing your screen and taking us through how the data dictionary works? Yeah, absolutely. Let me do it. All right. Okay. Um, so the first page uh, that you'll come to here is uh, a view of your actual uh, database data models. Um, or if you have multiple data sources, then uh, they would be all listed here. And uh, you can kind of type here uh, to search. And so here you see the source, a description, and then the table name. So if you were to click on a table name, so let's say we go to actors, uh, then that'll bring you to the uh, actors uh, database model page. And so here you can kind of get a glance at uh, what fields uh, does that database table have? And then, uh, you know, their description, uh, the type, the GraphQL type they map to, uh, and whether there are any indexes on that column. Then kind of uh, below that, uh, we have the, uh, the GraphQL uh, fields and operations that map to this uh, data model. Um, so those might be, you know, queries, uh, mutations, subscriptions. And if you click on one of these, so let's say uh, actors, then that will bring you to the uh, GraphQL operation page where you can see the GraphQL operation fields, their description, and their return types. Now, uh, at the bottom of the page uh, here, it's, it's pretty neat. Uh, it's kind of a... It's kind of an ERD diagram or a relationship view where uh, it allows you to see both the first and second degree relationships uh, between the type. Uh, so here we have uh, two degrees away from actors. So we have um, film actor connecting to actors here and then uh, films through film actors. Uh, and you can kind of see all the, uh, the fields that connect them and uh, whether, uh, whether or not they're indexed uh, as well. So if I go to first degree, then uh, there's no longer films and it's just film actor. Uh, if we come to the second, uh, second navigation item here, which is the data graph, um, this will be your larger uh, sort of ERD view of your, of your data. And uh, what you can do here is uh, you can kind of click on these tiles and these will tell you um, the array and object relationships that you have on these. Uh, and then clicking them will take you to the details page uh, for that as well. Uh, and then finally, you have the uh, graphical tab, uh, which will allow you to do, uh, you know, graphical uh, operations here uh, and kind of uh, explore, explore your uh, GraphQL uh, data. Excellent. So this is basically kind of like a reference for to someone who might be like a full stack or front end developer uh, and they're not, they don't necessarily maintain control or have full access to the database. 
Uh, this is a great way for them to actually understand how the backend Postgres database is structured and then understanding how the uh, how the GraphQL uh, schema looks in relation to that database, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Or, you know, you see in larger uh, organizations, uh, you kind of have these individual teams that might be building out uh, their own microservices. Uh, and maybe team A needs to know, uh, you know, what is the data model uh, for the API from team B? Uh, and facilitating that kind of communication and keeping it up to date, it can always be a pain. Uh, so this is a really easy way to just uh, sort of have all that data synced and available through one gateway. Excellent. And so um, this graphical tool is super, super helpful. And do you mind maybe taking us through kind of like this database that you're showing us and then maybe constructing a, a complex query using the graphical tool? Sure. Uh, so the database uh, that's set up for this demo is the uh, Chinook. Uh, data set. Uh, so it's a mix of two things. So it sort of has these um, entertainment, which is like actors, albums, artists, and categories, films. Uh, and then the other thing that it has is more of like a business. So you have employees, customers, uh, invoices, uh, etc. Aggregating invoices uh, for sales uh, and doing the sum of the total uh, where uh, the uh, customer ID is uh, one, so that would be the that would be the total of all sales for uh, the customer whose ID is one. Um, and you know this is super useful for things like uh, building like analytics or reporting metrics or disbursement reports. Got it. And the nice thing, the beautiful thing is here with just by checking some of the boxes there that it, it constructs that GraphQL query for you. So how can people download and try this out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we'll have a, we may have a hosted example uh, that we'll release. Um, there'll be a, a repo as well. And there are some uh, really basic setup instructions here. So uh, a Docker compose locally, we'll start a, a Hasura and a Postgres database and set up um, this sort of demo database schema uh, with all the rows for you. Uh, and then inside of the React app directory is this next JS app uh, that has the back end uh, and the front end uh, and you know, Yarn or NPM install and then the dev command uh, will we'll start that on uh, localhost 3000. And then you'll, you'll be able to see that uh, here. Got it. Okay. So that's getting it to run on your local instance. Uh, what if uh, someone like a development team wanted to actually, uh, you know, make it you know, run one instance that had uh, that the entire team could access? How would they like run it on their own infrastructure? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the cool thing about this um, is that it's really modular. And so depending on what kind of architecture you have in place or you know, your, your organization or team's preferences, um, you can just deploy this uh, backend API um, that powers the, the service behind this that provides metadata information. Um, so you can see here um, at API slash GraphQL, um, there's this uh, service which provides information about the Hasura schema uh, and the Postgres database. And for the sake of the demo, this is being served from a Next.js API route, but this could be, you know, this could be an AWS Lambda, it could be a serverless uh, handler. Uh, you know, you can deploy this and run it however you like. Uh, and then the front end, it could be server-side rendered. Uh, you know, you could uh, integrate these components with your current app. Uh, it could be, you know, static site generation uh, or just like a dynamic spa, wh whatever you want. Got it. And so this is an open source tool. And what um, what is on the roadmap that, uh, that we anticipate adding? It sounds like additional database support, such as like MySQL and SQL Server, that it'll be, uh, you know, in turn, that will be supported by like the Hasura Cloud and Hasura Enterprise um, of, but uh, you know, what are some of the things that you're hoping like the community either contributes to this repo or you're hoping that they build from it? Yeah, so I would really like uh, if 
you know, we could get some some solid, uh, you know, very v uh, generic and reusable components. Um, because I think that this reference app um, is great. Um, and it's, it's a fantastic building block and reference implementation. Um, but I think over time, if we can sort of refine these components that are used here uh, to be even more generic so that you know, developers can pull these into their own apps uh, and their own platforms uh, and kind of use them and style them uh, however they want to display uh, metadata information, that would be really powerful because that sort of can give you the building blocks uh, for building things like uh, auto-generated admin dashboards or sort of like, uh, you know, content management systems or, you know, like we mentioned, developer portals, uh, all sorts of neat stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Okay, well, thanks for giving us a, a great overview of this uh, data dictionary. And um, any other details that we missed or uh, you feel like we covered it? Um, no, I feel like that pretty much covers everything. Okay. Well, thanks for giving us a great overview, Gavin. Yeah, yeah, absolutely.